Hello, Cape Crusaders, and please join me in welcoming a very special guest to our show. She is the Guardian of the Green, the Lady of Lilies, the Venus of Flytraps. Please join me in welcoming Diane Pershing, the voice of Poison Ivy. Diane, welcome to our show. Well, thank you so much, Alex, and thank you so much, Will. Um, this is a lovely introduction. I think I'd like to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I spent uh, many hours typing that, so there you Good. go. <laughs> so w- welcome to our show, and obviously you being the voice of Poison Ivy is why you're here. As always, I do a little research. You were Poison Ivy in 12 episodes of Batman the Animated Series, plus multiple video games for the series, as well as 25 episodes of a show called Gotham Girls, which I didn't yes. know existed until today so i have to first ask you this show gotham girls which is animated just like bruce tim's universe why didn't i know about the show it was in the early 2000s it completely escaped me well from what i remember it was um 15 minute segments little quick internet things Ah, i don't I, i don't think it was on television right well i know it was like discovering something you know like I don't know, a, a lost chapter of a book I love. Oh, I was, you yeah, know? no, I love doing it. And I got to know Arlene, really, Arlene Sorkin, who played, uh, you know, Harley Arlene Quinn. Quinn. Uh, I got to know her really well, and we maintained our friendship. Yeah, no, well, she was she was a delight to work with. There was a almost an improv feeling when we did it, you know, it was great. That's amazing. So yeah. um, going off of that then, after yeah. so many times playing this character, after many years of playing this character, what parts of her do you see yourself in? Like what parts of you did you put into Poison Ivy? And what does she mean to you as a character? Well, she, I've heard that people have thought of her as the first feminist uh, uh, cartoon character, you know, um, in a sense that she... She stood up for what she believed in. She didn't care. She didn't give men power over her. When she spoke to um, Harley later on when they got to be friends and she basically said, you must not let Joker talk to you that way. You cannot, you know, cave to what he wants all the time. That's not, you know, respecting yourself and all that. And um, that's me. I, right, okay. I am that person very much. So, I mean, I'm, I have nice, soft, gentle sides and all that stuff, but I know how to stand up for myself and I don't take crap from anybody, you know? <laughs> so, so I think that part was very wonderful. The The rest of it, the whole sex object thing and the using men and being that, that just doesn't, ha- that's not how I present myself or see myself, you yeah, know? Yeah, absolutely. Except yeah. vocally, vocally, I did a lot of, cosmetic commercials and and soft sexy voices oh so there she it, is there yeah, she is I yeah just heard her. so yeah so when it was time to audition for her i knew exactly what she sounded like you also have a, a very um because the thing i love about the animated series is it, it's it feels like it's you know a, a film noir that was filmed in either the 40s or the 50s and you have that classic sound to your voice where you sound like that classic Hollywood you know that and that's what yes. I really like that you bring to the character yes and I, when when I looked at the you're probably going to ask me what was it like to audition for this well I'm going to be jumping ahead now and telling you because that was important it was a last minute serendipity out of nowhere thing I was on the show I'd been brought in for a couple of uh, you know slight speaking parts you know an officer or this or whatever an operator and the actress who had been uh, apparently considered for the role at the very last minute the producers and directors decided she wasn't quite the right thing and they wanted to find somebody new and Andrea Romano who I had worked with before asked me if I wanted to audition for it so I said of course of course because that's what an actor says of course I can do that right yeah um so I I looked at the cell at the picture and I thought she's kind of a Tinkerbell, but sexy, you know, (laughs) hormonal Tinkerbell, you know, because she has that green outfit and the legs and the sexiness. Um, But yeah, we were just we were just we were just reviewing your first episode um, a few weeks ago. And we commented on that. It's like a like a woodland sort of elf like elf. Yeah. But but very much a woman. Yes. Not a not a sweet little elf. 
And I remember I could have my my sexy voice, which I utilized in a lot of uh, of my jobs, but also she was a PhD. Right. So she had a brain. So you combine the sexiness with a little bit of an edge, because that means brain, you know? Yeah. That's all. And so that's why the voice came real easily to me and I, and uh, and why I got the part, I guess. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I can see that. I mean, that is Poison Ivy. So, yeah. But when she was pitched to you, I suppose you're like, oh, I can I can figure out who she oh, is just by in a heartbeat. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Just looking at her. And then also they were so clever in casting a lot of theater actors, which is what I basically started out as really good actors. We right. had people that people that would investigate their character a little bit and bring a little extra work, not just do voices but bring a bigger, more complex, more, shall we say, nuanced, you know, version of, of, of the character. And um, I was one of those, and that's what I did and loved it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. so when you guys um, were recording the episodes back then, um, I know from uh, we've had guests on the show, it was all done in the same booth. All of you were in the yes. same booth together, which I think yes. is just brilliant. And obviously, I think that's one of the many magical things that go into what the why the show has lasted for as long as it has and continues to last to yes. this day. So being in the booth together, what was that like as an experience? Like, do you have any uh, particular memories or fond memories of recording in the, the booth for Batman? Well, I, when I grew up, um, just about the time of TV, really. I mean, I, I'm I'm pretty old, um, and I loved radio. I would listen to radio. Uh, I was I had to iron my own blouses and skirts for school every day, every every Sunday, and I'd listen to radio plays. I'd listen to, you know, I mean, those Inner Sanctum and all all of those marvelous, the romance of Helen Trent. And I fell in love with the voice, the sounds of voices on the radio. And then later on, before I did Batman, I did a few radio shows kind of thing where we were all in the room. We all had our own mics. We all had our own music stands and our scripts. And I loved it because we could look at each other and react off each other, not use our imagination, you know, yeah. but just, and that was what it was like. It was magic magic especially if if one or more actors start to go on a roll in setting the tone i'm sure that's yes. quite quite infectious right like you can pick yes. up on that yeah the yes. ensemble because most of the voice work i've done in the la last 20 years has been just me and from wherever i was in the world and that is how it is yeah, yeah, but you're you're extremely popular in the con circuit. I see you part of Comic Cons all the time. Oh, oh yeah, I do. I'm very lucky because that character, which I had no idea, uh, is iconic, which I had no idea about until somebody told me five, six years ago, maybe six or seven now, that I had a fan base. And I said, I have what? <laughs> and and I investigated and found out why by God I do, and then was contacted by people that do these cons, uh, managers, and they they handle me and they get me out there and God bless them, you know, it's so lovely. We're speaking about your fan base and that this this character is iconic. Yeah. When did yeah. you realize that the show was a smash hit and did you own a, a Poison Ivy action figure? Oh, I have one. Do you? Yeah, wait, uh, again, pause. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Oh, oh wow look uh, at that oh that's amazing that's really cool that's lovely this is from the warner brothers store you know and it was a gift to me and i have this wow that's and, beautiful and isn't that wonderful and it's it's you know it's numbered and all that stuff what's that made of like porcelain or something like that? oh it's it, it's yeah it's yeah it's glass yeah that's, or wow, whatever, that's amazing you know? for, for yeah. everyone listening she has this amazing beautiful statue of her character from the show yeah yeah, absolutely. And and I also have a, an original cell that was a gift from them. Okay. Um and and uh, but apart from that I'm not much of a collector cuz who has room? <laughs> I mean, I get rid of things now. I don't amass more things. I've got lots of wonderful pictures 
of people that I met at the cons with autographs and all that nice stuff. That's nice. Yeah, that's all I got. Well, that's amazing. So when did you realize the show was what it was? When I told, I'm telling you, six, seven years ago, when someone said I had a fan base. That's I said, outstanding. Well, they, I said, for what? And she said, for Poison Ivy. And I said, what? <laughs> and they said, yeah, it's been on the air pretty steadily. It's really popular. And I said, no, really? Wow. It has, it's always been this cartoon that's just lasted um, and has had a fan base of, you know, people that, like, I mean, we are in our 30s. It was made for us as kids, so that's why we liked it. But there's kids now watching it and loving it. Three and... generations, my darling. Absolutely. Yeah. Three generations come up to me at the cons, the the grandfather, the father, the kid. Wow. And they say, you know, at diff- you know, because it's 30 years. And if you were an adult watching it at that time, which a lot of people were, it was made for an adult audience. Kids did it too, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and because it was so sophisticated. And so they did it. Then those kids grew up and they had children. And here we are. Well, yeah. I, I have a, a question for you. Yes. Um, do you have any memory of seeing that Uma Thurman was going to play Poison Ivy on screen? I, re- I, I have a memory that she did it. I didn't see the movie. Right. I didn't know if you were yeah. thinking, if you were sitting with your arms crossed, like, that's my character or anything <laughs> like that. Oh, no. No, no, no. In fact, they continued to use Poison Ivy for years after I was done with it. They, they I think the, the explanation was that they were trying to go to names instead of journeyman voice actors, which is what I am and always have been, very happily so, believe me. So that's that's interesting because, um, speaking of Uma Thurman, we just uh, recently had a writer, uh, Robert Enskia, who wrote several episodes for Batman just on the show, and he was talking about how the movies took a lot from the cartoon series that came before them just a few years before them. And one of the things that was taken was Poison Ivy became this eco terrorist, right? And that she is, is. yeah, and that's all down to Paul Dini, the writer Paul Dini, who wrote Poison Ivy in that way. And you know, that's right, gave her that characteristic. And yeah, with your voice lent with that characteristic, I think is just a perfect blend. Um, it's just incredible. Thank you. So do you do you have any fond memories of working on the show? Is there anything that you look back on and go? Uh, that was joy yeah sheer joy um mark hamill on my right and ephraim zimbalist jr on my left <laughs> and and that. and kevin across the way left and other people you know paul williams over there next to i mean in other words, i have Im- i have visual images of the recording sessions yeah and of having the best time on them because there were so many funny people and sometimes we were laughing so hard we couldn't get through it. I mean, we <laughs> did because we're professionals. But joy, working ensemble. I'm also a singer. I get such joy out of singing in a chorus, not soloing. I right, mean, right. I do, but you know what I'm saying. There is a feeling, an ensemble feeling of uplifting joy. And it's the same feeling when you have actors in a room all on the same wavelength, all working together. Yeah. They're just, and I would leave those sessions and just be happy for the rest of the day, which is not how it was with all of my work, needless right. to say. And and that 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 makes me really happy because obviously you then deliver your best work possible when you're oh I you're think so like yeah. That. Yeah. I really and, do, yeah. Because you were you were in what some say is the best episode of Batman the Animated Series. It's titled "Almost Got Him," where "Almost Got Him." Oh, people yeah. love that. Yeah, it's people a great episode. People love that one. And you know, that's you were just talking about how you had Mark and and Paul Williams and all of these yes, people around yes. you, and that that episode is just all of the best villains in Gotham sitting at a poker table talking about how they almost killed Batman. And I can just imagine the booth that day with all of you in that booth must have just been incredible. Yeah, because we didn't work with the other villains that often. You know, I was a guest villain, and various people were guest villains. They weren't on all the time. Time. Yeah, just basically uh, Lauren as Robin and um, and Kevin as Batman and Alfred uh, Ephraim. I think they were the only real steadies. You know, everybody yeah. else was was you know villain of the week or whatever. Mm, yeah, 
I'm yeah. still shocked that you only realized six or seven years ago of the impact because like, so I currently draw for DC. I recently drew very small, but I did draw poison Ivy and I, I was allowed to draw it any way I wanted. And I drew it pretty much oh, exactly yeah, the way guy. Yes, yeah, because to me, you. your version of the character is, is the character to me. I don't see it any other way. So I've been told <laughs> I, I just six, only six to seven years ago. Someone said, Hey, by the way, you might want to know that people really love you. <laughs> And you, you kind of did an iconic but that's version when also, of character. You know, and, and then somebody told me, and this is honest, this is not, I mean, this is true. I just don't follow cartoons. I'm, that's not the world no, that I live in. You know, that's the only, that's the only reason. I mean, I like them when I see them, but I, I like, you know, with my grandkids, I've watched a lot of animated cartoons, but it isn't the world that I live in. No, and, and this show was said, different. This show is different. From yeah, this yeah, yeah. And yeah. and somebody said there was a poll of who was the best voice for Poison Ivy, and apparently I win every time, which is so. I mean, it's joyous again. It's lovely. My work is appreciated. That feels lovely. Yeah. I, I, that, maybe that was the the magic formula that you not knowing how much of an impact yeah. you had just, you know, made Well, none you. of us knew when we did the True. show. Yeah. I mean, Kevin either. None of us. Would. It was a job. We were so happy to have it. It went on for a few years. And then you went on to the next thing. And, right. you, you know, I've done, what, a thousand voice things? I mean, you know, just... But that was the one. Yeah, that's the one that That was the one. Stands out. Who knew? What was, yeah. So what's your favorite voice job you've ever done then? Oh, this one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Sure. I mean, I've done, I was the voice of J.C. Penny, you know, for many years. Really? Were you really? Yeah, oh, my yeah. God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but. but Our mom that loved just... those adverts when they were. Okay. Old. Well, that was, we're talking a long time ago, but that was basically, you know, this week on sale, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so that's Poison not... Ivy selling clothes at J.C. Penny. Not really, because I didn't use that voice. You know, I, right. I use my warm, nice salesperson <laughs> voice, you know, <laughs> and then I've done narrations on a a few uh, documentaries and stuff like that where I, I got to be a little poetic sometimes and thoughtful. But this was the most fun I've ever had. And once in a while, uh, I think I did some oh, some games where I had to play a dragon and I had to die 50 different ways or something like that <laughs> and make noises. And I mean, and it was challenging. That was challenging. And it ripped my voice up, but I did it and it was fine. And the next day my voice was fine because I'm very strong. Yeah. So you well, know, you're a singer, right? Yeah. So you I'm a singer. Have... Yeah. 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 That's why. So you yeah. were one you were one of the few main characters that were strong female leads in this show. And there were quite a few yes. female characters, but reoccurring, you had Poison Ivy, obviously voiced by you. We had Arlene Sorkin as the voice of Harley Quinn. We had Tara Strong as Batgirl and Adrian Barbeau as Catwoman. So my question is, what was it like being with these amazing actresses? Just as much as you are the definitive Poison Ivy, they are the definitive versions of those oh, characters to, to mostly everyone, right? So Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, I, uh, again, a joy, a professional. Right. And, yeah. and, um, and a good person, too. None of this... We didn't have any of those a holes, uh, the the very um, narcissistic diva type personalities on the show. None. Yeah, yeah. They're, uh, they're just they're they're such great characters, and um, you know, in the nineties, yeah. uh, especially in in kids television, that was that was not that common to see strong female characters. You know, no. that, especially people like Poison Ivy, as you said, that's. Um, that had a feminist voice, especially at that time period. Yeah. You know, that was, yeah. that was a big leap for the show and everything. So again, I know you didn't know until about seven years ago, how big of a character <laughs> she was, but yeah. that's, that's, that's a big deal for the nineties, you know, to have a character like that. So. Oh, uh, definitely. Listen, yeah. it's just, it's the story of women. You know, we were most, except for the thirties when they had all those wonderful females as stars, they could open a movie, you know, the Betty Davis and the all those people, and they were strong characters. Although they usually gave into a man at some point, <laughs> um, but but it the woman has been the sexy one or the wife, right? That's it. Yeah, and so to be actually have a character that was just a little more complex than that it yeah. was very nice to play her. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, she wouldn't be wiped up by anyone. No way. No. 
So the saddest thing that's happened from Batman, the animated series, was the passing of Kevin Conroy recently. And being that you worked with him on many an episode and video games and such, what was it like working with Kevin Conroy? Well, he was such a pro. He was just such a pro. He was, uh, again, one of those non-diva people. He was excellent at what he did. He, the cons is where I got to know him better. Because when you work in a room with eight other people or whatever it is, and you all say, hey, lovely show, great to see you, goodbye, you go home. That's it. Right. But at the cons, because we're all at the same hotel and sometimes we all go out to dinner or sometimes we meet in the green room, you know, and we have we have pictures with some. I have this lovely picture of me and Dick Van Dyke. I look great in it. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> come on, let's just have a little <laughs> ego here. Yeah. Anyway, but he looks just amazing. This was from about five years ago. Yeah. When I got to also meet some people that I had a crush on. You know, I mean, actors who, ah, that kind of thing. And oh, got, who, did and, Boyce, and who did Boyce and I I'm have a not crush gonna on? Tell you, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> okay. I'm okay. not going to tell you. <laughs> I will just tell you, though, that I really did get to get hugged by one of my favorite television people. And that's going to be the end of that story. <laughs> and, and his name but, was Dick, Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> not even close. No. Anyway, Kevin, you know, I was sort of shocked at how deeply saddened I was by his death. Yeah. Um, not because, of course, I was sad, but deeply saddened. It was like a part of me was gone. And I think from doing the cons all those years and seeing him and seeing the fans lined up in the morning and him getting on this chair and going, oh, I am Batman. And everybody goes, <laughs> yay. So I knew he was ill that last year. Right. Uh, we knew, we all knew, but he was private. He didn't talk about it at all. And we got the message not to ask about it. That's Man, the... he kept showing up till like a week before. He kept wow. showing up. Mom. I love doing the panels with him. He was great fun, you know. He was the anchor, right? Well, he was the anchor, uh, but I was sort of the, <laughs> I was sort of the, the comic. I mean, I'm very fast on my feet uh, right. in, in front of in front of the public, you know, and um, and we used to tease each other during the panels. And uh, usually I got the last word. In. <laughs> well, that's really nice yeah. that you had moments like that as well outside. Oh, of recording. definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So is there anything that you haven't been able? Let me rephrase that. Is there any question that hasn't really been asked that you thought that would be a fun thing to be asked or to talk about before we we close this out? Well, just to get on my soapbox a little bit, uh, people that think voiceovers are an easy way to pick up a few bucks, which I have heard people say and ask me, and I tell them actually, no. First of all, it's a very crowded field now, now that we're we're global. There's just, you don't have to be in New York or LA or Chicago anymore, you know. Right. Um, number one. Number two, there really is a craft to voice acting. There really is microphone technique, uh, timing, not popping your, your peas, knowing where to stand. Um, and there really is learning to express through your voice what you can't show people. So you have to it's it's different than stage acting or film film acting which is very very underacted stage which is overacted but voices are kind of in the middle and it takes years and a lot of hard work and it also takes discipline and not being a pain in the ass right. <laughs> that's really really now once they get big, they can be a pain in the ass and people will, you know, lick their boots and say, fine. But really, work ethic is, is crucial. It's not a real easy way, way to make a living. I was very lucky. I got in and I, I I really was one of the top women in L.A. for about 20, 25 years. And we made inroads and as far as women being able to do more of the stuff that was classically male. Uh, station breaks and all of that coming up now you know that you yeah. hear women now you, you didn't hear women back when I I was there I mean I 
I pushed for it. I was the first female, I think, on on CBS. Wow. You know, okay. doing, wow. doing promos and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So so I, I guess that's what I'd like to say from my from my soapbox for a minute is it's not easy. Um, it's harder than it looks. And if you really have a fire in the belly for it, go for it. But if you don't get a different job. I feel the same way when it comes to to drawing, because that's what I do right. for a living. And, right. You know, it's, a, it's a competitive business that not everyone can stomach. And, you know, a lot of people think like, oh, you draw for a living. That sounds easy. I'm like, well, I'm not like a kid on the floor coloring in a coloring book. You know, it's it's a lot of talent and a lot of work. So I hear you. Amen. The difference. Amen. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody comes up to me with this gorgeous speaking voice. How do I get into voiceovers? And I said, well, you take classes first to see if you're any good. Just because you have a beautiful voice doesn't mean shit. You know, so are you going to have that. to bleep that out? I don't no, know. No, no, oh, no. Oh, good. Not okay. at all. No, don't yeah, worry. Yeah. No, I have a very, very, shall we say, potty mouth. Oh, I love that. I oh, love we that. Do yes. As well. we, Always we do, have. Good. We do as well. We're on our best behavior right yes, now. We we usually I know. You're we, being we, angels. We are a couple of, of, of salty sailors, though. <laughs> uh, that's what you guys are delightful. You really oh, are. Thank you, Diane. That's no. lovely. Yeah. So I'd love to. I'd love to sit down and have a drink with you. <laughs> well, you, you are right now because I'm having a scotch. So. <laughs> oh, how nice! Good for you. It's the only way you can get through drawing this book. That's right. <laughs> or, or, or any activity in my life. I got. Listen, you you take what you can get, right? Exactly. Yeah. So what are you up to now as far as um, your Comic-Con appearances, which you've been doing a lot? Do you have any Comic-Cons coming up? Are you looking yes. to be a part of any cons? I have um, three, a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Philadelphia in May. I don't okay. know the name of it, but that's there. And then I have something in near Baltimore in July. And that's okay. all I have. I just did one. Um few weeks ago yeah i, <laughs> I think i, I saw don't that remember cause... where oh god <laughs> <laughs> i mean i've seen in these years now and i've only done probably between five and seven a year it's not like i'm i'm there every weekend but i don't remember the names of the cities i mean you're meeting different types of fans but they're all still fans at the end of the day they're right? fans yeah. you go to a place they have you set up with the thing with the setup with the table with the pictures with the, huh? and then yeah. you go find a restaurant to eat if you're lucky and you go to sleep and then you do the same thing the next morning mm -hmm. and you get on the plane that evening if you're lucky enough to live somewhere where there's a direct flight otherwise you stay over one more night and you have breakfast at the hotel and then you go so you don't see the city and the, no, by the way no. i was on the road for years as a backup singer i don't know if you know that i think um, i saw that in your yeah yeah, yeah 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 and and i never saw the city we were in well i just knew that i went we the bus took us to the thing and we had a mic check and a thing and we went and we had a meal and then we put our makeup on and then we did the thing and then we you know some of us went out and had a drink after and then you know so I've seen the whole country. I just haven't seen the whole country. <laughs> right. You what know? Act, what acts, uh, any acts that we would know that you were a backup singer? Well, uh, again, it's generational. Do you know who Johnny Mathis is? I do, yes. I, I, I like quite a lot of old older music. So. Okay, then you know that's who, that was my first professional job out of, uh, out of college. I went wow. to UCLA Theater Arts, and, and, I, and I got my first job with him. Uh, and Andy Williams, these are all from, you know, Man, Anne Margaret. A lot of good people. Well, Diane, thank you so much for coming on our show and sharing all those amazing memories and stories with us. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've watched you as this character for over 30 years of my life. And wow. I will say that you will always be the definitive Poison Ivy to me. You're always going to live on as this character through generations and generations, as you've already started to witness. And you are the voice I hear in my head whenever I read a Poison Ivy comic book. So wow. you've you've done the best job possible there. Well, now that is a really nice thing to say, and I really deeply appreciate it. Well, we thank appreciate you so much. We appreciate you, and thank you so much for coming on. Okay, my pleasure.